to be guys this is rob from a gay guy plays and we are back with another installment of rob reads you shit that you do not feel like reading yourself so you know if you feel like just turning on the game just go ahead and jump on and i got you covered right here and there because today on the docket we have a dev workshop with the endless kuva survival and kuva guardian changes now i'm going to be completely honest with you i'm super hyped for this mainly because of the fact that y'all know how much i love re-rolling ravens I don't think that it loves me back, however, because there's been a lot of pain and sorrow in my life due to that. However, we're going to go ahead and combine that with a little bit of survival, and you know that spices things up just a little bit. Um, regardless, I'm really excited for this, so let's go ahead and jump on And Now, as you can see, this is by D.E. Sheldon. I'm like, I never see him post, um, even though it says, oh, he's got 29 posts. You know, in the five years of Warframe, 29 posts. Okay, Sheldon, working quietly in the background. Greetings, Kuva Thirsty Tenno. Since the War Within launch on November 11, 2016, Tenno have been introduced to the continually roaming Kuva Fortress. But contrary to its name, no Kuva can be acquired directly from the Kuva Fortress missions. Mmm. -hmm. I mean, come on. It's the fortress. We gotta be able to go in and infiltrate and jack all that stuff. Instead, Kuva Siphon slash Flood missions on nearby planets are what offer that delicious Kuva if completed accurately. Kuva is a unique resource with a particular acquisition method, and we want to make sure that the addition of the Kuva to the fortress followed that design intent while offering players a much requested avenue to acquire it outside of the Siphon Flood mechanic. And I completely agree. The thing is, Warframe usually gives us a lot of different avenues to acquire certain things, kind of like, you know, we have the Eidolons for all of the focus shards, and then you can kind of grind out the focus yourself, and you can do it, you know, in solo and solo missions, or you can do it with a group, depending on the the way that you set up put your Warframe. So we have a lot of variation there, but not really when it comes to Siphon and Flood missions. It's kind of very similar gameplay. It's very, very familiar, but it's nice to have a little bit of something that's additional, especially because it's very get in and get out when it comes to Kuva stuff, right? It's just like you go in, even in, even in our current survival, right? You're in for five minutes and then you're like, fuck it, like we got our Kuva, we gotta go now, bye, thanks. Um, so it's nice to be able to hunker down into mission, get that, um, get that challenge to kind of go up a little bit uh, and get some Kuva while you're at it. So our solution comes in form of a permanent endless Kuva survival mode on... See, the, the thing is, they expect me to be able to read this name, uh, Tavuni, Tavuni. Sometimes I think that they make these names and they don't actually expect anybody to read them out loud. Um, in the Kuva Fortress. This mission will start off like any other survival mission, but now with a twist. Marked enemies will drop something new, Kuva Catalysts. Um, developer note, a Kuva Catalyst is a Kuva Catalyst carrying enemy will spawn per life support tower as either an Eximus or a Kuva Guardian. That's a good thing to note because if you're looking around for it, sometimes you get in a cluster of enemies, just look for the aura or just look for the big, you know, luscious lady of the Kuva, right? <laughs> Um, so as you can see here, it's basically like a canister that you see in a lot of the excavation missions. However, it is flowing with red juices. Oh, that sounds... that does not sound good at all. Picking up this Kuva Catalyst and simply walking up to an unactivated life support tower transforms the life support tower into a Kuva Harvester. Now you must protect this Kuva Harvester for one minute, as indicated on your UI. Enemies will now logically and forcefully attempt to destroy it. If they succeed in destroying the Kuva Harvester, you will lose out on both the Kuva and life support tower. They don't mess around with the Kuva. Oh look, you can actually see it there in the, the image where it actually connects. That's pretty gosh darn cool. Um, so yeah, it's one of those things where use it or lose it, you probably might want to bring in like a defensive frame like a Zephyr or a Frost to make sure that you can really kind of keep enemies off of it, especially if you're going to be escalating with it. So definitely nice. Um, once the Kuva Harvester is complete, you grab your successfully earned 200 Kuva from the completed Kuva Harvester. Completed Kuva Harvests also give a small percentage of life support to your aid and literal survival. Yes, because here's the thing. Y'all know that I have been known that the number one thing that kills me in survival is the fact that I forget to survive. So it's nice that we can harvest up these towers and get at least a little bit of life support from it because legitimately, like, you trying to get me killed already um, just by getting rid of the towers. <laughs> uh, once the harvester is complete, okay, we can move on from that. You actually see that. Um, developer note. 
Uh, deciding to make the Kuva be a physical Kool-Aid bottle looking drop allows for resource boosters and Smita Kavats uh, charms to apply. So yes, we got some love for the Smitas, yes! Because you know, there's no better companion than the Kavats, all right? The Kavats kill it, I don't care, don't at me, don't talk to me um, about any of your feelings on that. Yes for the Smita Kavats. All right, moving along. Uh, please ignore the clone transmission in place of new Lotus transmissions for completing the Kuva Harvester. I see you there, Clem. I see you. Um, the design intent and the goal for Kuva survival is for players, both public and solo, to balance risk and reward as they sacrifice their life support towers for precious Kuva. Carefully managing available life support towers and life support dropped by enemies becomes increasingly important in order to obtain as much desired Kuva as possible because, legitimately, you want to be able to, like, have those the whole point of getting the kuva is to have those towers there um so you definitely want to kind of like bring a necros maybe even a hydroid uh in order to go ahead and grab a whole bunch of extra life support so that you know you you don't have to rely so much on the towers and you can pretty much use them as a harvest i wonder if that's going to be an issue where there are some players that are gonna want to be in just for survival or do you think that everybody is just solely going to go in there for kuva what do you guys think Leave that in the comments, because I'm very, very curious. Um, let's see. You can see the original work-in-progress version from Devstream 108 here. Uh, and they've got a link for that, and I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description uh, box below as well. Uh, frequently asked questions from Devstream 108. 200 Kuva is awarded per Kuva Harvester. This value is still subject to change with continued testing slash feedback. Considering the endless survival aspect, this number will allow Kuva survival to sit in the middle between Kuva Siphon and Kuva Flood in regards to the amount of Kuva rewarded. Tenno who want a quicker Kuva routine can still play Siphon or Flood missions, but those who want to acquire this resource via familiar gameplay with a twist can jump into an endless Kuva survival. Kuva awarded per successful Kuva Harvester does not increase as the endless survival mission progresses. Our intent is for Kuva survival to mimic the mechanic of excavation slash defense with the intensity of survival. This I actually don't think is a bad idea. I know a lot of people like to say, you know, the higher you go, the more that you should end up getting. But what I've seen in the past with that kind of um, design is legitimately people feel like the only way to go is to go there for super super long and then a meta develops and then that meta kind of becomes a little bit toxic and you're like if you're not running the meta then you're not you know then you're not um you're, you shouldn't come to these missions i you, things have gotten ugly in the past as friendly as the warframe community is if you don't do it their way they get really really irritated i mean i have given some side eye myself i'm like Come on, y'all, we're gonna be here for a while. But apparently, that's not something that they really want to support. And it feels very similar to everything else that they've done in the game, where it's kind of like, you can be in for 20, or you can be in for 40. The only difference is whether you're doing two 20s, or you're doing 140, but your, uh, but your rewards are the same. And it's nice for the players who maybe don't necessarily have quote unquote meta frames. Because let's face it, not everybody is going to be like a Warframe YouTuber who um, literally has sat there and gotten all of their Warframes and whatnot and have everything slotted. Not everybody is going to have the availability. Maybe people are running with lower level frames or they don't have enough weapon slots to like accrue some of the best weapons out there. And just saying, I, I think that it's definitely fair to a lot more people. However, if you want the uh, if you want the difficulty, you can always stay in for longer. You know, you want to show us how big your balls are. <laughs> um, Kuva Guardians and Kuva Jesters, as seen in Dead Dream 108, also have a chance of spawning. These enemies add to the twisted variety for Kuva survival and gives you a place outside of the Siphon Flood to fight them. Plus, these enemies have been conspicuously missing from the Kuva Fortress kind of like the Kuva, but it's nice to see all three of them now making an appearance. <laughs> uh, Kuva Fortress Survival Improvements. Removed cramped and maze-like Kuva Fortress tiles that felt unsuitable for an endless survival with an excavation slash defense twist. I'm gonna be honest with you, one of the things that drives me crazy about the Kuva Fortress is I get so fucking lost. I, there's, that tile set 
um, some of the infested tile sets and the, uh, I think it's the Europa Corpus tile set where, you know, you kind of have to like go in mazes and sometimes they're like cliffs and stuff. Man, any of those underground things, I get so lost in. So thank you for that because I would hate to be trying to run to survival tower and, or just trying to figure out my way around and get stuck in one of those tunnels. So we gate for that. Add a, added a repurposed fortress defense tile to Kuva's fortress survival with improved enemy navigation and traversable areas. I actually like that um, fortress defense tile. I think it looks fucking epic with like the swags of like cloth coming down from the ceiling. So it's nice to see that revisited. Ooh, we've got new Kuva guardian changes. In light of all of these changes surrounding Kuva, we felt it necessary to make the improvement tweaks to the Kuva guardians or onion babies as Megan likes to call them. When faced outside of the war within quest, their mechanics mechanic required them to turn vulnerable as has been met with some confusion. As an overall change, Kuva Guardians are now easier to turn vulnerable, uh, but will become tougher to kill once they are. Mmm, a little bit of a trade-off there, right? Uh, previous vulnerability flow was Operator Void Blast to stun, then Void Dash when stunned to disarm their Keshig and turn vulnerable. New vulnerability flow. No stun state required, Operator Void Blast or Void Dash to disarm their Keshig and turn vulnerable. Now that's always, that's that's kind of good, it kind of simplifies things, and I'm going to be completely honest with you, when I am there and I'm playing, uh, client side specifically, as a host, it's super super easy to take them down, because you just pop out of your, you just pop out of your Warframe and you know, you give them a stun and you give them a dash, easy peasy. But man, there have been some times where you have bad connections, and you're literally, your Warframe is facing the enemy, but for some reason, when you pop out of your Warframe, you're like, reversed. And I'm like, why am I facing this way? But because of the fact that you have the muscle memory, you've already hit your stun and you're about to hit your dash and you're like, wait, where am I? So it's definitely nice to kind of like bring that down, especially because of the um, client side, like I want to just call it like a lag issue. General Kuva Guardian changes. Increased Baith's health from 300 to 400, slightly increased the fire rate of their twin Roga. Oh, okay. Um, can you do that for our twin Roga too, please? No, just kidding. Our twin Roga packs a fucking punch. Guardian health type is now in line with the rest of the Grenier, weaker against heat and viral, but more resistant to gas. Added a red glow around the Kuva Guardian to depict when it's vulnerable. Okay, I like that. A little visual indicator saying, here we are, you can go ahead and own our luscious lady jelliness. Um, please keep in mind that everything that you read slash see in this dev workshop is subject to change as we continue testing and reading feedback up until launch. We hope to ship this as early as next week, but of course we welcome your constructive feedback and suggestions. Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you, I'm pretty excited. I'm not necessarily the happiest with the amount of Kuva. You know, here's the thing. As a player, I'm always going to want a little bit more. So I'm like, you know, 200 Kuva is a little... Maybe like 250, maybe 300 Kuva would be nice per harvest. Maybe a little generous with that. Just, just a little bit to kind of uh, get us to jump into that tile set, which is a... Let me tell you, that tile set is aggressive. It's... Aggro. I've never seen a tile set that is so angry at people who come into it. So make us feel a little more welcomed with maybe just a little bit more Kuva. Because here's the thing, if you double 200 Kuva, it turns into 500 Kuva. So that's, that's kind of like where I'm sitting at right now. Um, but regardless, I think this is all really, really interesting. I'm curious as to what you guys think in the comments below. However, if you guys have any feedback, because I know y'all love to leave some of your paragraphs. Some people in here like to leave like a literal novel of their feelings. Leave those novels in um, the Dev Workshop post, and I'll go ahead and link that as well as the uh, Dev Stream 108 stuff that they had earlier. So leave all your big feelings there, but give me like a, you know, maybe like a three sentence overview of exactly where you're feeling at the moment with this. Are you excited? Will I be seeing you there in the Kuva Fortress? Because you damn well best believe that I'm gonna be playing a lot of that Kuva Fortress, but only once the unvaulted stuff from the planes goes, because you know, this'll be around. <laughs> the vaulted relics, boom. So I gotta go ahead and do that. Regardless, that about does it for me for now. Um, toss all your feelings in the comments, keep it nice and short and sweet. Uh, and then, of course, leave your constructive feedback in the forums, because that's really where it's going to do the most, the most work, alright? Um, but that about does it for me for now. So, as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your luscious lady of the Kuva. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye